And everybody said, Amen. Amen. The Sermon on the Mount, lesson number seven. Praise the Lord. This, this, this series has gone by really, really fast, at least to me it has. It's taken us seven weeks to arrive at this point, but we have covered a great, great deal of material in these yes. seven weeks. We started in chapter five. We learned about the Beatitudes. What's that mean? That means let your attitude be like this. We learned how us as believers are salt and we're light. Yes. We learned the importance of our words. We learned about marriage and divorce. We learned about if somebody says go one mile, go two, always go the extra mile. Yes. We learned about loving our enemies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Randy's not here, so I can do that tonight. <laughs> in chapter 6, we learned about, in chapter 6, uh, continuing our study, we learned about uh, maintaining the right motives, yes. because our motives are everything. Amen? We learned about the Lord's Prayer. All right, our Father which art in heaven, we learned that. Uh, we learned the importance of fasting, the importance of giving. We learned about serving God instead of serving money. And we learned about trusting God in our future. That was just chapters 5 and 6. And then last week in chapter 7, we learned about not judging people based on their appearance. Hello, somebody. And we learned about not casting our pearls before the swine. Come on. And we learned about persistent prayer yes. and walking on the straight and narrow road. Yes. And this takes us now to verse number 15. So we're going to uh, jump right back on into it. Y'all ready? Yeah. Here we go. Verse 15, Matthew 7 and 15. Beware, say beware. Beware. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, say inwardly. Inwardly. They are ravenous wolves or ravenous wolves. How can we tell the difference between a true prophet and and a false prophet, well, there are two primary ways in the Word of God. Number one, we should always line up what somebody says according to the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. Woo. No matter who the preacher is, right. no matter what the evangelist's name may be, no matter how popular they may be on TV or social media, we are to judge everything that we hear according to the Word of God. Yes. If it's not in the Word, don't believe it. Amen. If it's contrary to the word of God, if it goes against the principles of God's word, do not believe it, but reject it. Jesus said in John 17, 17, that God's word was true. Amen. So us as believers, we are to test everything we hear to the truth of God's yeah. word. And yeah. the second way that we can tell if somebody is a false prophet is to examine their lives. Examine the fruits of their lives. And the next verse goes into more detail about that. Let's yeah. read verses 16 through 20. Jesus speaking here says, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit. Did you hear that? Yeah. Good trees produce good fruit. But a bad tree produces or bears bad fruit. Verse 18, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Come on. Nor can a bad tree bear good fruits. Truth. You ever wonder why some people, man, why are they so wicked? Why are they so evil? How could they act like that? How could they talk like that? How could they speak like that? How could they think like that? It's because the tree is bad. Yeah, it's incapable of bearing the good fruit. Verse 19, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire, Jesus said. Verse 20, therefore by their fruits, yeah. say fruits, Fruit. you will know them. Amen. Here in California, we grow all kinds of fruit. Amen. We grow apples, we grow oranges, we grow cherries, lemons, plums, peaches, apricots, strawberries. Are you getting hungry yet? Yeah. Amen. However, there are some fruits here in California that we just don't 
grow right. too well. And uh, uh, one example of that is coconuts, to believe it or not, even though we live by some beaches and stuff, uh, or have that in our state. The coconuts really don't grow too well here in California. And because coconuts are so rare, if Brother Mark came to church and he told me, Pastor William, I got a coconut tree growing in the front yard, I would tell Mark, well, uh, in order for me to believe you, you've got to bring me a coconut. And, and, I'm, and if he did bring me a coconut, I'd make sure there wasn't a sticker on there that said three nine from Walmart or, or $5 from the Dollar General or something like that. You see, Jesus yeah. said that you and I would be known by the fruit of our lives, not necessarily the fruit of our lips. Yeah. If we say we are connected to the vine, the true vine, Jesus Christ, will supply us the proper fruits that we have need of. As children of God, we do not judge people for condemnation but for identification. We are to be fruit inspectors. What are we to inspect about people? We are to inspect the fruit being produced in their lives. We're not to look, hear this, we're not to look for perfectly shaped or perfectly colored fruit because none of us in here are perfect. Can you say amen? All of us have flaws. All of us have imperfections. All of us have shortcomings. Some of us are bruised because we've been dropped. Some of us don't have the proper color we should yet because we're not fully matured and developed yet. And that's okay because it is still fruit yeah. that is being produced. Yeah. Jesus didn't tell us to look for flawlessness but for fruitfulness. What kind of fruit should you and I be looking for? for in other people's lives, especially of those who call themselves ministers of God's word. Galatians chapter 5 tells us, Galatians 5, 22 through 23, Paul said, but the fruit of the spirit is joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. I don't know about you church, but I don't want to settle for leaves. I don't want to settle for empty branches. I want my life to bear the fruit that the Bible said it would bear. I want people to look at my life and say, I see love. I see kindness. I see gentleness. I see the patience of Jesus Christ Come in on. Brother William's life. As Christians, we're not to judge people based on their appearance, but we are to judge people based on the fruit that they bear. You can judge a tree by its fruit. Can you say amen? Verse 21 and through 23. Verse 21 through 23. Y'all still with me tonight? Yeah. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. That's right. right. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name? And done many wonders in your name? Sounds like a lot of Pentecostal people be like that. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Yes. yes. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You practice lawlessness. So the King James Version says, you worker of iniquity. Oh, yes. Uh, whenever we pastored uh, on Baker Street, we had a lot of religious people in that community, but not a lot of them were saved people. How many know there's a difference between being religious and being right with God? Yeah. Some of those people we knew, they'd come in off the streets from time to time, and they'd raise their hands. Some of them knew how to smile and shake hands. Some of them knew how to sit in church and say, Amen, preacher, bring it hard, bring it hot. But throughout the week, I'd see them sitting in their front yard drinking liquor. I'd see them cussing their kids out if their kids were playing too loud outside. I'd see them walking down the alley smoking a joint, and then whenever they see me, they just, they just keep on puffing that joint and say, Hey, pastor, God bless you. Come on, somebody. I'm just saying, just because you're religious doesn't mean you're right. Just because
yes, you can slip into church every now and then, doesn't make you a born again believer. Those people on Baker Street, for the most part, did a lot of talking, but they didn't do a lot of walking. Jesus said, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but only those who do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. What is the will of the heavenly Father? 2 Peter 3 and 9 tells us that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. It is God's will that everybody be saved. It is God's will that everyone repent. It is God's will that everyone have a born again relationship with Him. God's will is not hard or difficult to find. Simply give your life to Jesus and ask Him what He wants you to do from I'm there. Sometimes we think, well, I got to take a Facebook quiz to find out what God's will is for my life. I got to wait on somebody to prophesy the will of God over my life. No, no, no. This thing is simple. Get saved. Give your heart to Jesus and the Holy Spirit will begin to lead you and guide you into all truth. Can you say amen? 24 through 25, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, come on somebody, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fail or it did not, it did not fall. Why? For it was founded on the rock. What makes a person a wise builder? They hear God's word and they do God's word. They do it regardless of the consequences. They do it regardless of how it makes them feel. How many know sometimes this word of God will step all over our sinful flesh? A person that is a wise builder will hear the word and do the word of God regardless of how it makes their flesh feel. A wise builder hears the word and they act upon it regardless of the outcome. That's what a wise builder, a wise person does. James 1.22 says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. How many know it's not enough just to hear the word? It's not enough just to listen to the word. It's not enough just to go to church and to listen to somebody preach a sermon. But you've got to let this word get inside of your heart. When it tells me to trust God, I need to trust him. When it tells me I'm forgiven, I need to believe I'm forgiven. When it tells me I'm highly favored, I need to believe I'm highly favored. When it tells me that all things are in the end going to work out for my good, I've got to trust that God's word will do exactly what it has promised. We've got to hear the word. We've got to believe the word. And we've got to act upon the word. My dad growing up always said God's word must be mixed with faith. You can quote all the scriptures that you want. You can learn all the Bible verses you want. But until you start applying them. Until you start mixing them with faith. And acting upon the promises of God. It ain't going to do you a bit of good. You don't just need a head knowledge. You need an experiential knowledge of Jesus Christ. You need to be like Paul and say, I know him and the power of his resurrection. I'm here preaching this word tonight. It's not just something I was raised upon. It's not just something I heard about, but it's something I've stood upon all throughout my life. And it's given me strength when I've been weak. It's given me joy when I've been depressed. It's given me hope. Apply it. Almost threw all these papers out at you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Yes. The rain still came though. Yeah. Yeah. The floods still came. But I built my life on Jesus. I built it on the rock. Yeah, but the floods still came. The rains still came. In this world, you are going to have tribulations. 
It's not going to be a Sunday school picnic like we think from time to time. Yeah. But I promise you, if you've built on the rock, you're going to be standing after the storm passes by. Come on, somebody. That will make somebody shout. Amen. If you've really built your life upon the rock, you'll still be standing after the storm passes by. It doesn't mean you're not going to be heartbroken. It doesn't mean you're not going to have bad days. It doesn't mean you're not going to have days when you feel like you're stressed out and overwhelmed. But let me tell you something. You always get back to a place where you're standing up, not in your own strength strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. As I look out at this house, I see people who walk through some storms. I see people who didn't have the greatest childhood growing up. I see people who lost a daddy, lost a sister, lost loved ones, lost friends, lost jobs, lost finances. But yet here you are. You're still standing. You're still praising. You're still worshiping. Why? Because you Built your life upon the solid rock. Yes. Christ Jesus. Amen. That's the only reason you're standing. Amen. You built your life on the rock. Yes. And when the winds blow and you see this thing fall over and that thing fall over, you're not washed out at sea like those that build on the sand. You're still standing. Amen. Why don't you just lift up your hands in this sanctuary? Hallelujah. Lord God, we love you. We're so thankful that even in the midst of the storms, we can still stand in strength because of you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verses 26 and 27. Y'all still with me tonight? Yes. Listen, Jesus going to Turn this now, 26 and 27. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them. Remember, like I said, you can hear all the word you want. Right. Yeah. But if you don't do it, yeah. come on. And does not do them will be like a foolish man yeah. who built his house on the sand. Man, it, it looked great at first. Man, it looked just like the house on the rock. But when the storm came, when the rains descended, verse 27, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell. And great was its fall. Yes. What makes an individual a foolish builder? It's a person who hears the word of God every Sunday, but they never apply it. We can come to church every time the doors are open. And I want you to come to church every time the doors are open. Got a better chance hearing from the Lord sitting in church than sitting on your couch. Come on. Yeah. Amen. But if we can come to church all we want, but if we don't apply what we hear, we're going to crumble yes. when the storms of life come our way. Uh, Mom and Dad always said growing up, whenever storms come, you find out what people have built on. Yep. You find out what they have and you find out what they didn't have. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, notice the notice that regardless of whether you built on the rock or that you built on the sand, the storms still come. Yeah. The scripture tells us that through much tribulation will enter the kingdom of God. Storms are going to come to the righteous yes. and the unrighteous. But the difference is that you and I have somebody to run to. Whenever storms come our way, we don't need to run to alcohol. Right. Come on. We don't, we don't need another prescription pill or an illegal pill that we bump from some friend or quote unquote. People, some of us, we hanging out with people ain't even really our friend. Whoa, yeah. Come on. Yeah. We don't need drugs. At all. We don't need alcohol. We don't need perversion. We don't need a, a, a new husband, a new wife, a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend, a, a new this or a new that. No, no, no. When you're really built upon the rock, you understand there's only one thing that you have need of, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. There's someone higher than your defeat tonight. There's someone 
higher than your addiction. There's someone higher than your anxiety. There's someone higher than your depression. His name is Jesus, and he's the one you need to run to. Quit running into a telephone. Quit running to Facebook. Quit running to this influence or that person. There's one that can help you in your time of need. Lift up your hands and shout that name, Jesus. The one that we need. Yes, Lord. Lead me to the rock. Thank you, Lord. Don't lead me to the drugs. No. Don't lead me to the alcohol. Don't lead me to this thing and that thing because those are only temporary fixes. Yes. Yeah. And when you wake up the next morning, you're still going to have those hurt. Yeah. There's only one that can give you a healing, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Lord. Verses 28 and 29. Jesus has now preached his sermon. And you got to remember, Jesus didn't take seven weeks to preach this. <laughs> right. He probably had all this wrapped up in maybe about 30 minutes or so. Never know. Right. Maybe an hour or so. I wish I'd have been there. How about you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wish I'd have been there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus has now delivered what he thought those people and us people needed to hear. Yep. Listen to verse 28 and 29. Then we're going to wrap this whole study up. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings yes. that the people were astonished at his teaching. Now we got to remember. Back in chapter number five, when we started the study, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. Yes. But now, not only were the disciples listening, but a lot of other people had come and began to listen in. When Jesus had ended these sayings, when he got done speaking, that the people were astonished at his teaching. Well, I don't like teaching. I just want preaching all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll forget my preaching. Come on. But a lot of times we don't forget teaching. Come on. Yeah. Come on. It may not make you have Holy Ghost goosebumps and make you do a Jericho march, but it'll stick with you. Yeah. Th this is like steak and potato. This is going to stick to your ribs. Come on. And people are going to tell you you've been eating. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. When Jesus said any of these things, the people were astonished at his teaching. Verse 29. For he, Jesus, taught them as one having authority, yeah. not as the scribes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, it was custom in Jesus' day that Jews would hear different rabbis or teachers give different interpretations of the scripture, you could say. For example, one rabbi may see things one way, but then the next rabbi that would teach would see things a little bit differently, you could say. Because of these different viewpoints, sometimes people would leave confused. What's that verse really mean? What, what, what does that passage of scripture, what is it really referring to or talking about? But when Jesus spoke the word, there wasn't one bit of confusion about it. Therefore, the crowd said, Jesus doesn't speak like the scribes do. Jesus speaks with authority. Amen. And I want you to know, New Hope Church, that tonight Jesus is here and he is speaking with authority. He's saying with authority, fear not. I, the Lord your God, am with you. He says with authority, I shall supply all of your need according to my riches and glory. He says with authority, you are forgiven. You are loved. You are redeemed. You are free tonight. When yeah. Jesus speaks, he speaks with authority. Yeah. No wonder demons flee at the name of Jesus. No wonder storms quit raging right. when, at the sound of the voice of the Son of God. 
Jesus spoke with authority. Every time you read this word, read it knowing that this is God's authority over your life. Whatever it says, it belongs to you. This is your weapon. Come on. This is your sword. Don't leave it on an end table where you put your coffee cup on top of it. Where you put your remotes or your phones on top of it. Come on. Come on. You don't put your phone on top of your gun, do you? No. No. If you don't have one, you need to get one. Right. 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 I think you're all here. You're all going to preach a double header. Huh? He's going after me. I'll be Elisha. He, uh, I'll be Elijah. He'll be Elisha. <laughs> but come on, we, we treat we treat everything else so much better than the Word of God. Growing up, we we could never we could never put anything on top of the Bible. My mom did not believe that. And you can stand tonight. Don't worry. I'm done. Don't worry. <laughs> if it ain't Rick, it's Hannah. <laughs> we couldn't put anything on top of the Bible. Not a toy, not anything. Mom said there ain't nothing more important than the Word of God. We we're to treat it with reverence. Treat it with respect. Because His Word is authority. Amen? Amen. Brother Johnny, why don't you, why don't you come, brother? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our hands tonight.
Bless y'all. Love you.